Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. I'm Mary Dossinger. I'm the program manager of the River Run Film Festival, and I'm excited because I'm joined today by the filmmaking team behind Medicine Man, the Stan Brock story. We're joined by director Paul Angel and producer Vladimir Daniel. Uh, thank you both so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having us in the festival. <laughs> Um, I'm going to get started with, honestly, the question I, I ask most documentary filmmakers, um, just because I'm always really interested, you know, documentary filmmaking is a laborious process, it often takes many years, and so you have to truly be really connected to your subject matter, and after seeing the film, it's no surprise why you were interested in Sam Brock, he's endlessly fascinating, he's lived an incredibly exotic life all over the world so it makes sense why you wanted to follow him but what first drew you to him how much did you know about him was it him was it remote area medical what was the driving force behind the decision to make this film and how long has the process been well my research skills go a little further than just checking the national newspapers <laughs> so <laughs> i simply discovered an article uh, about stan in the Sunday Times in 2011 and all of the stuff about public school and um, being a cowboy in Guyana and being a wildlife TV star in the US it was all in there um, and then of course there was this element about how Stan was going around the US doing free pop-up field clinics uh, medical clinics wherever he could find space in disused parking lots, uh, exhibition halls. Um, and I thought, wow, like this is incredible. Um, th this British guy should be undertaking this, this huge challenge um, on this very important social issue. But he also has this incredibly complex and rich personal story. And I thought, well, quite obviously, this is the makings of a documentary feature film. Mm -hmm. um, so... I read the article, I mean, the, the story goes, I, I read the article and immediately decide to just call their office in <laughs> Knoxville, Tennessee. And Stan himself actually picks up the phone and it's like Sunday night. I'm thinking, oh, this guy's like <laughs> totally awesome. He walks the walk, talks the talk. He's picking up the phone. And um, I just said, wow, I, I've just read this article. It's great to speak to you straight away. And I'd like to do a film about you. And... Um, there were a few other filmmakers circling around like vultures, those independent <laughs> filmmakers, you know what they're like. Um, and for some crazy reason, Stan decided to go with us, even though we weren't the most um, experienced or um, celebrated uh, filmmakers out there. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I, I, I kind of guess that obviously there's a British connection. Right. Um, but maybe he saw some parallels in our ethos. We're quite a DIY production. We've, we've had to kind of beg, steal and borrow a, 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 some of the road to get here. So I, I don't know if he saw a bit of kind of startup spirit in us that we, we could make this thing happen, even though we didn't have tons of resources behind us. And that, that's much the same story that he had when starting Remote Area Medical. Right. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's such an amazing story. I'm glad, I'm glad he chose y'all because it, you made an incredibly beautiful film. And one of the things that really struck me about the film is it felt very different than a lot of films I've seen. And as a programmer, I've watched hundreds and hundreds of films every year. Um, and it, but it struck me, I loved the play between his life. You know, you, you have the archival film that felt very different partially because it was older film, but also just the way you interweaved them, I thought was really beautiful and told such a great story of his life. And I'm curious how much of that was in your head since you had read this story and you knew those elements of his life. Did you have an, an idea in your head before shooting or did this all kind of come over the many years of shooting and then obviously in the editing room as well, but I'm curious how, how you chose the structure you did for the film. I very much went into this film as a kind of film school purist. 
<laughs> thinking that I could make like the ultimate purely observational uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. documentary feature film about a guy who's got a rich and complex life but it's also dealing with um this important social issue um within about three minutes i realized that that was an utterly incorrect conception that i, I wasn't going to be able to do that um and kind of to be able to do that you need people to tell you their awesome kind of biographical stories that like on the hoof and um I don't, a, I don't think Stan would have been able to do that. Most, most people can't. Mm -hmm. And B, I don't think that like, the tone of those stories was something that you could just tell me while you were like washing dishes at the sink. Right. So I was like, oh, okay, then we're going to have to do formal um, sit-down interviews. Mm -hmm. And then you realise the richness. Well, it, it, it was obvious that there was this great archive out there in the world about Stan, but we didn't know the, the full richness of it um, until until weeks before the end of the edit when like, tons of amazing stuff came in on VHS oh, from um, Tennessee Museum of the Moving Image. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah, so you're aware of like, you, you've got all the um, actuality stuff, you've got all the um, interview stuff, you've got the archive stuff, and then you're thinking, well, oh, this is just like a complete stylistic generic mashup at this point um let's bring in stills let's bring in um tons of score and and sound design where possible i mean i wanted to go into animation too i mean it's like what have we not done here 3d animation like what what else yeah we had some conversations but we had to, we had to pull them back out of that <laughs> every time animation got brought up i was very quick to shut it down. <laughs> The film would have taken another three years. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, but that's, that's um, the thing, actually, just to kind of pick up from that point. That's what yeah. we kind of realised in the edit. There's so much um, media there, and it's such a rich story right. that right. Um, a big challenge, I think, as it is with, with all these documentaries, is actually how do you structure in the most effective way and not to conform to any particular style and not to, right. um, you know, how do you express... Uh, the theme of the story and the heart of the story most effectively mm -hmm. and we kind of wanted to cut it um in such a way that you were able to see the three strands that are at play you've got stan's incredible backstory you've got stan's uh story with the remote area medical and obviously you've got the developing u.s healthcare crisis as a backdrop to that and actually marrying those three themes up mm -hmm. was really challenging and that's why you know, we developed this kind of time hopping um, structure in a sense where we cut back and forth between between these different themes. And it took a hell of a lot of work, actually, um, from um, Paul and the editorial team to strike the right balance, because it's one of those things where you kind of pull one thread and the whole thing can fall apart, um, which is why we went through such a prolonged uh, editing process. Um, and actually, it was an education in a way, because when people talk about, uh, you know, like Paul was saying, you know, editing in film school, so a documentary edit, well, you know, six weeks, 12 weeks, whatever, no problem. It may be the case for a 60 minute, you know, TV piece when you go out a crew and they film for a couple of weeks, but something like this, it can take uh, months and years to get it, to get it just right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm well, glad that we came up with something which we feel is actually quite um, unique in the way that it's, um, you know, the way that we bring the story to the screen. Yeah, no, it, it really is. And it's it's just so such a loving, lovingly tribute to him. And it's really incredible. I'm curious, when you found all of this information over these years, was there any one thing either of you would like to share that interested you the most or shocked you the most or even potentially something that didn't end up in the film about Stan that would be fun for audiences to know? <laughs> Where'd you start? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this this is a I'm, this is an area really that gets back to the film production process itself. But we, I think Stan's story is all the more powerful for knowing that he himself was battling prostate cancer the whole time, and that's something that we only briefly touch upon at the very end of the film um in the title cards mm -hmm. um and the, you know that that's partly because at, at stan's behest we, we, we didn't want to 
divulged that he was going through that and he, he was one of these people that didn't want to be labeled as mm -hmm. a cancer sufferer i suppose mm -hmm. um but to to just kind of announce that in cards at the end i don't think it really displays to people um how incredibly difficult like that whole that whole struggle w was for him um when when we started filming in 2012 he was already quite uncomfortable um and i could tell i i didn't know there was but somebody very close to him um a, a, an, a, an old friend of his um took me under her wing to some extent and and spoke to me and said he's been diagnosed in the 90s and it's been great like he's been on top of it he's been i think he was uh getting by with a macrobiotic diet and doing amazing things. Um, but but things things are ag have been aggravated. And you can tell by the way he's walking. So it was apparent to me then. Um, and then, miraculously, he seemed to do so well for years. It, it wasn't an issue. It was never discussed anymore. And I, I did... Uh, I, I touched on the issue once with him. Um, and... He said it, it's not a major issue and it's not it's not really relevant and I, he didn't want to talk about it in the film, but of course by the end of filming, um, his his scores for prostate cancer were extremely high and he knew he didn't have um, long left, and that's when we revisited the topic of oh, is this something that you know you want us to talk about now? And he really didn't want to talk about it and he said hey, at the end of the film if you want to say if you want to say that um, I've been through this and, and let people know that that's fine, but let's not bring it into the actual production process now. Like as we're, as we're doing this, as we're making this film, let's not let this define um, who I am. So um, there's a lot mixed up in that, like my personal feelings for Stan, my ethical role as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. Um, and, but also, like, what, what's the most powerful story I can possibly squeeze out of this situation? Because that, that is what my, my job is to do, you know? Mm -hmm. If we're here for anything, it's to try and tell this story about people being deprived healthcare in the most powerful fashion. Mm -hmm. So we, were put, we, we challenged Stan on that, you know? And that's hard. That's hard to do, to tell somebody that you think you know better than them mm -hmm. when it comes to discussing their serious health issues. Um, so, you know, that's something about Stan that I'm not sure, really sure comes across in the film. And, and it's something that um, has taught me a lot. I've learned a lot about how to um, talk to people and, and address issues because of that. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah but on a less, um, less serious note, maybe, I mean, as much as um, we have fitted in about Stan's life into that 90 minutes that we got of the film, there's a a whole plethora of stuff which we didn't even have a chance to cover. For example, Stan was a three-time published author. He was um, an authority on nature. There's a species of bat which has been attributed to him that he discovered apparently in South America. Um, he helped, I think, design a number of zoos in the US. He ran so barefoot stuff. across Florida to raise yeah. money for a zoo. Um, you know, Odd Job from uh, James Bond. So he used to work out with Odd Job's brother. I was like, oh, that's almost good if it was actually Odd Job, but oh, we can't quite. Put, that's Odd Job's brother. He was a karate master. I think he was a black belt or someone in karate. I mean, it was just incredible yeah. how talented yeah. Stan was. There's was so much stuff that he kind of just took to, and they're all things that's. I'm kind of jealous because they're all things that he kind of fell into and then just somehow always became incredible at them. <laughs> and I guess maybe that's part of the reason why he wanted to do something more meaningful. Maybe he realised at some point, you know, had such great success in all of these things, but I've not really benefited anybody else. Maybe I should put that talent towards helping others, which, which is very powerful, I suppose. A lot of people in that position just try and increase their status as much as possible, whereas Stan had no real interest in that. He was always diminishing his role actually in what he was doing. It was always about the cause. Well, and I think that's maybe why he didn't want to talk about the cancer. Maybe he didn't yeah. want to make it about himself. He didn't want people saying, well, this guy's got cancer and he's not getting treatment or whatever. Obviously, it's going to be all about healthcare. I think he just wanted to make it about the issue and about all the other people and their problems and not himself. Yeah. 
I think that's what really struck me most about the film and as one of the last things we can talk about is that and all of this that you're saying plays so into what I felt about him during the film and so it is amazing that I, I feel like I got all of what you're saying just from seeing him in the film because as a man who was on TV and doing these crazy things and you know living his life very much in front of the camera you still really got this feeling of a reticence from him or a hesitation to really make it about him even though clearly this movie was about him but I think that's what was so beautiful about it is that you never felt overwhelmed by him I guess he's just was such an amazing person and doing all of this remote area medical when you see him on the ground with the people it's just so lovely and so heartwarming and not at all about him and that's just so beautiful and really what I took away most from the film is just this meditation of a human's purpose in life and finding a place in the world that is where you're meant to be. And I feel like he really did that and it was beautiful. Um, so my question, my last question to you, I guess is, and you've talked about it a bit, but what would both of you say would be the number one thing you hope audiences take away from your film? Can I go first? Cause I've only got 10% battery left on my phone. Oh, yep. And then, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I used to say that I wanted the film to ultimately dispel the myth that there was nobody in the U S who was um, suffering from um, a lack of healthcare, but I actually noticed that during the course of um, making such a long winded production uh, film that um, people did you know, in 2012, they weren't so um, abreast of that view. And then by the end of filming, people were aware um, that there was a, a there is a situation. And, and to say there isn't, it's just madness. Like it's, it's like saying climate change doesn't exist. It's like, yeah, it's pretty much proven now. Um, so what I would like people, it's not that, you know. So what I would like people to take away is that um, by coming together, engaging with your community you can achieve great things even though you are on different different sides of the political divide you're from different backgrounds you're you you walk different uh, paths you've walked different paths in life you as american people you can still come together and achieve great things i truly truly believe that uh, you know stan stan shows that and i saw it all all over the place when i was filming in in those years so um yeah you just just want to kind of boost boost up America and remind remind people that you know, they've got a lot of what it takes. Yeah, no, thank you, Vladimir. No, I'd, I'd completely echo that. I think it comes down to me about reminding people about the importance of empathy. I think, which is really the great discovery that Stan had in his life, where he'd spent so many years being, you know, the ultimate um, survivor. I guess completely. Um, independent completely self-reliant and yet he was able to realize that that still didn't kind of give him fulfillment it's only when he allowed himself to become more vulnerable and become dependent on others that he really developed mm -hmm. empathy for other people and that's why i think he was able to bridge those divides and bring people together and help so many and i think at the moment um in our society not just in the us but globally we see people increasingly diverging you know, on the political and social spectrum. I think a lot of that comes down from a lack of empathy. Nobody wants to put themselves in somebody else's shoes. And, uh, you know, Stan kind of took that in, to the extreme by putting himself in the shoes of the people he was trying to help. And, you know, I'm not suggesting that everybody needs to, you know, sleep on the floor and not take a salary and not have health insurance and so on. But I think more people need to look at the world from somebody else's perspective and maybe you will start to understand why they think a certain way and then perhaps you can start to dispel those ways of thinking where they are not beneficial to society. We really hope to film that can inspire people and bring people together. Well I agree and I think you 100% accomplished that with your film and that is a big part of what I got out of it and why I thought it was incredibly important for us to show it and I thank you both for making such an incredible film and in particular for allowing us to be a part of this film's journey and letting our audiences see it. So we really do thank you so much for allowing us to show it at River and thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.